Hi, welcome to the workshop. Uh, this is the workshop uh, of, uh, for like UCANs, and you can learn how to do UCANs too. Uh, and uh, I'm Alan, I'm an engineer at Dag House, and uh, Arakli is sat just down there. He is an engineer also. If you need help during the workshop, then um, you, we can try. <laughs> um, Cool, uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of an intro and explainer before uh, we get stuck into the workshop. So uh, let's uh, just start with the first thing that we should probably cover. What even is uh, a UCAN? UCAN stands for User Controlled Authorization Networks. Um, and the key thing here is that they are user controlled. Uh, and so UCANs are a way of doing authorization where the user is fully in control. Uh, they started out as like an extension to JWT. So you can think of them as like a, a token that you'd pass somewhere to gain access to stuff. But they're actually really, uh, really different to like a traditional API key or something. Um, in that everything that a user is allowed to do is captured directly in the token. Um, there's no all powerful uh, authorization server. Uh, there's no authorization server at all. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so what we're, I'm just gonna dive straight in. Uh, this is what uh, in the inside, the payload of a UCAN looks like. Uh, so let's have a quick look through the, uh, the fields and I'll try and, try and explain them as best I can. Uh, so the, the is or issuer uh, field is the uh, kind of the identity of who issued or created uh, the UCAN. You can think of this as like who the UCAN is from. The audience field is, uh, is the, the identity of who the UCAN is actually intended for. This is like the recipient of the, the delegation, the UCAN. Uh, exp uh, or expiry, it's a, just a Unix timestamp that specifies when the UCAN stops being valid. Um, and then like the big important one is the uh, attenuations. Uh, and they're, they're basically a list of capabilities uh, that have been delegated to the audience, the person who's receiving the UCAN, by the issuer. So let's look into them uh, a, bit, a bit more. So in, in this particular case, uh, the capability called store slash add um, has been delegated. Uh, and the with field here is it, it, it's the resource uh, the delegated capability applies to. And so, um, for example, in web3.storage in our new APIs, um, when we delegate store add, the resource is typically like a space, we, what we call a space, a uh, place where you store things. Uh, the proof field, which I haven't filled in here, uh, but it's there to, uh, it, it's, a, it's a list of nested UCANs that prove the issuer is able to delegate those capabilities to the audience. And then the whole thing is like signed uh, using the private key uh, so you can verify that it was sent by the, uh, the issu issuer. That's it. There's not loads to it. Uh, it's really good. You've seen you've seen the internals now, um, and like so, you might be so kind of get an idea of what is uh, what is possible um, with UCAN. So let's just let's just kind of um, go through them or enumerate them at least. Um, you can delegate capabilities, like specific capabilities, like you saw in the example store add, um, but you can also delegate like a wildcard, like all capabilities or a wildcard underneath a, uh, a, a namespace. So you could delegate store slash star to get all the, the store capabilities that are available, for instance. And then you can delegate uh, multiple capabilities. You saw that the, um, the ATT field is an array, so you can delegate multiple things in a single UCAN um, or just, just, a, just one. You, uh, when you create the UCAN, you specify who the intended audience is, like who's gonna be receiving that UCAN. Um, and, and that means like even if someone like intercepts that UCAN, it's not really useful to them unless they have the private key of the person that it's intended for. Um, so one, one field we didn't um, cover in the, the deep dive is like caveats and they're basically, um, uh, basically speaking, the like every delegated capability, um, you can speci optionally specify these these caveats in this field called NB, uh, and this can be used to like narrow the scope of the delegated capability. Um, so for um, for this, uh, so uh, oh yeah, okay. So for uh, like an as an example, if you had a capability to um, delete something from a collection, you might use the caveats field to uh, restrict the content types of things you can delete or, um, or maybe 
specify file name suffixes that you, you're allowed to delete, for, for instance. Um, the, uh, it has expiry, as you saw. Um, expiry field allows you to create like short, really short-lived delegations for like time-bounded operations. It also means that you can have really short-lived uh, 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 delegations or UCANs that you don't need to revoke because they only apply for a little little amount of time, and it's not it doesn't matter so much. Um, but you can what you can do also is specify this not before field, which means you can actually create UCANs that will become valid in the future. Uh, which is super cool. So that, yeah, that's that's what what can you do with you cans? <laughs> um, and then the the really big, the really big one that you can of, of things that you can do with you cans is you can use them for invocations. And like the idea is that when you receive a delegation, you actually want to use that capability that it provides you with. So uh, there's a whole spec for this, um, and it's being used in IPVM as well as other places, we're using it in WebRefute storage as well. Um, and this is what we'll be working with primarily today uh, in vacations. It's UCAN RPC. <laughs> so remote procedure call with UCANs as authorization. So, uh, and so that segues nicely into like the, the UCAN working group organization. The UCAN working group uh, is uh, on GitHub. Uh, it's got a ton of resources there. A good place to like ask questions, uh, read up on the various UCAN specs. Obviously the spec for UCAN themselves as well as the invocation spec can be found uh, here. That's uh, UCAN-WG on GitHub. Um, we, <laughs> we have an implementation of UCAN in IPLD. Uh, it's currently JS only. Uh, the, the, the fishing guys drew this cool avatar for us, mascot, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of like the IPLD logo, but upside down, it's like a jellyfish. Uh, anyway, so, um, <laughs> so you might want to use this if you, uh, if you decide to build a, an IPFS-enabled UCAN application. Uh, there's also a bunch of other libraries for working with UCANs in other languages, uh, which you can Go, go to and use. Um, but the most important library that uh, we want to introduce to you today is uh, this library which we called Yukanto. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a UCAN RPC uh, library, it's written in JS. Um, and it conforms to the UCAN invocation spec. Uh, and we use it in the new web3.storage uh, APIs, which we call, we're calling W3Up, it's currently in beta, but you can access it um, and use it right now. Um, and so we're gonna, what we're going to do is use Yukanto in the workshop today uh, quite extensively. So uh, there you go. Anyway, so Yukanto provides uh, like nice client and server abstractions, uh, allowing you to perform invocations with delegated capabilities. Um, you can on the server you can provide handler functions to to kind of deal with the the requests as they come in, and you don't have to worry about validating delegation chains uh, and stuff like that because the library does that does that all for you. So. Uh, it is good, and there's a bunch of other cool tooling which I have not mentioned here, but um, yeah. Yukanto, if you remember nothing else, then Yukanto is the thing. Um, so, workshop. Are we ready to do a workshop? Woo, yeah. A couple of people at least. <laughs> uh, it's, we're, it's an observable. It's an observable. Um, we, we also have a leaderboard. I'm going to pull up the leaderboard as well. It's a competition. It's a game, a competition, uh, and we're all going to uh, play with the observer board, uh, observable uh, to create to create delegations, enter the uh, the competition, and um, you have the the chance to win chocolate gold. Uh, <laughs> if you if you are top of the leaderboard at the end of the workshop, then you will win a. Um, chocolate coin uh, to, to um, I guess, signify your ability to do things well. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so as a prize for the, my, uh, the, the, the participant that gets the most points, we have more than one of these just in case the, uh, the uh, <laughs> more than one person gets the same amount of points. Anyway, so uh, right now it is time for you to open up your laptops, go to this URL. Uh, you might need to Register for observable, I guess, um, but uh, you don't have to register. Okay, might be an idea to fork the observable. You don't think you need to do that either, but if you want to keep it, then I think you need to fork it. Um, uh, and the observable basically has the instructions for the workshop, what you need to do to, uh, to, uh, to win, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, yeah, essentially, uh, you follow the instructions and you will do uh, make 
uh, invocations to our Yukanto server, uh, and you will gain points for doing uh, the things in the right way, and you'll see yourself on the leaderboard, uh, and I'll pull that up now. But um, yeah, if you have questions or problems, then just grab like me or Arakli, it will be kind of uh, around. Um, pull it up, see how far you get, uh, and yeah, go wild. <laughs> Okay, so when you, uh, when you open up the URL, it should look something like this. Uh, we've got uh, agent key, key pair. The website is gonna be your agent in this workshop uh, and you need the key pair. We've generated one for you here. Uh, your identity, your identity is this DID that gets listed here. Um, then we've got the provider address. So this is like the server side of things. Um, uh, so this is just connecting your, your agent to the, the server. Then we can ask the uh, we can talk uh, we can get the connection to tell us exactly what uh, what kind of uh, RPC endpoints are available. I guess you can call them, um, and it will show you that in in uh, in this uh, in the IPLD schema syntax. Um, so you can see what you are able to do. Uh, but you don't you don't need this just yet. But once you get to here, entering the challenge should be as simple as. Um, Heading on down to this button that says enter workshop. And if you click on enter workshop, then uh, what you should see, uh, just like this, that you should see a DID end up in this list just down below, which is your DID, because you just submitted a Yukanto or you can request or invocation to the server to say, I'm here, this is my public key. <laughs> um, so we've got some, got some people in there and we can see their score as well. We also have, uh, we also. Which wall is this Oh, so this is this is the current leaderboard. There are some people who have who have entered. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave that leave that up. Uh, but yeah, so once you've once you've entered the workshop, then um, continue on the adventure, <laughs> and uh, give us a shout if you have problems. In the observable thing, is it easy to see like uh, the imports? What code actually is being used? Uh, yeah. Just wondering, because like yeah, uh, imports are down there, so down, they're okay. going to be in your way, and you can even load the like follow the links. Ah, right, to. here they are. Okay, cool. Uh, it nice. just basically imports everything, so you don't have to deal with them. But yeah, yeah, that's that's nice. I just wanted to see what what is being used. Cool. Yeah, this, that's an important point, I guess, in observable that the uh, it, it's it's this like reactive programming thing where you have like variables and things that have been defined. If they get if they get updated, then any code that's referencing that same variable will then get rerun. Like it's always constantly uh, running and rerunning when you whenever you make changes. Also, like everything is like a block. Uh, and on the left-hand side, there's like little arrows which allow you to, sometimes we, like we've hidden most of the ones that you don't need to see, but kind of pinned things open where you do kind of need to see it, but then we could have like messed up. So like there's little arrows on the left-hand side where you can drop down and see thing, anything that's kind of hidden away. So just be on the lookout for that. But it, largely it's all, it's kind of, it should be as you need it, as you need, as you kind of need to work of it, the code will be there for you to, to edit and, and run. And um, once you have made uh, changes, there's a little blue sort of play icon in the top right of each block that you should press to get those changes, to basically save those changes for that block. And, and oftentimes when there's, a, when there's a button, if you've made changes to the thing, press the blue thing, then press the button. Uh, that's something we've run into a, a few times. So <coughs> I see we have some names up there now which is great. The points you get, it's also like a time-based time, time thing. Uh, the, 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 if you're the first person to do a particular task, then you'll get more points. So, you, so when you come to delegating to other people, there's, it's a, again, it's a choose your own adventure where you either get to export a, uh, a file with that delegation in it, and you have to somehow send that to someone out of band over, IPFS or something, and, uh, or or you can use uh, this uh, special thing which we we created where you can actually stash that delegation in the server for the other person to then claim. Um, 
so, uh, so just be aware, when you're delegating to other people, there are th these two options for doing things. And so you will delegate to them. They need to somehow c claim it or receive it. There's a big or in, in bold, but it's maybe not big enough. <laughs> um, or it's just in all words. In, I know. <laughs> the capabilities are set up so that only that person can claim it, I think. Yeah, so incidentally, the access claim and access delegate capabilities are also some things that Web3 Storage implements, and we have a spec for it, and the idea is that it's pretty general. So when you delegate to someone, only audience can claim it, um, or we will give it only to the audience. But even if somebody get to have it, they won't have a key, so there's very little interest to doing that. So the person who has the capability, the person who controls that audience just shows up and says, do you have any messages for me? Or they have to say, I'm trying to claim a specific thing. No, you just say, you just invoke access claim with your DID. And anything that had been delegated to the DID, you'll get it. I think we frame it 10 at a time in case there are too many, but then you could do it more. Also, like, once you claim it, we'll remove it from the server, so it's not gonna stay there. Yeah, well, I caught it all last night, so maybe it crashed, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but now everyone get to try it again, and maybe you <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm sorry. We also have a server that you can run yourself, and in Observable, there's a switch to use your local host version one, if you wanna do that. And so there's also a few things you can do, like you can write loops and make like a disco background on your avatar if you want to. Like, yeah, and like there are a bunch of things you can, like we, you can abuse the colors and like we don't escape it, so you can like mess with HTML if you want to. So yeah, if you're looking for a challenge, that could be fun. One thing that you should maybe watch out for is that any delegation you make can expire. So if you don't use it quite quickly, you might find you're not able to use it to... Uh... Um, so there's an, another fun exercise you can do if you want to. So when you define the schemas or when you do the delegations, so there's a type union. So you can say, well, you can change my background color to yellow or red, but only those two and delegate that. So like, be creative, don't just do what Observable does. So the Yukons that you delegate, I think they expire really quickly. I think it's 30 seconds or so. But then you can set expiration when you do that to set to whatever. Uh, so you can do that here. Although it's better to have short-lived, so that's why it's default. <laughs> if you do the longer delegation chains, you'll get more points, like you can delegate to someone and they can redelegate to someone else, and et cetera. All right, we're, we're running out of time now, so let's do, should we call it quits? Whoever's at the top. It's okay. <laughs> All right, uh, so burrito. Am I gonna throw this? Is that a good idea? Ready? Yes. <laughs> uh, second is uh, ICID asset. ICID asset. Yes. Good job. Are you ready for this? <laughs> All right. Nice. Third place is Freakan. Nice. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, well done. And I've got um, loads more for everyone else, the smaller chocolates. So come and uh, if you're on the leaderboard and you feel you deserve a chocolate, uh, come, come and grab one. <laughs> um, but otherwise, like, feel free to keep, we've got 10 minutes uh, left. Feel free to keep hacking. You can keep hacking on this uh, afterwards as well. Um, we'll try and fix the server at some point. Uh, sorry about that, but you know. <laughs> Some of it worked, at least. Um, yeah, well done, uh, everyone who came and did a thing. You all did really well, a lot, a lot better than I thought you would. It was amazing, so uh, well done. <laughs>